Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Second Act Actors. I'm your host, Dr. Janet McMorty, and I'm still a medical doctor simultaneously trying to pursue a career in acting. My guest this week is Ahmed Mokdad. Oh, my goodness, Ahmed. What a guy. He and I met at the Simcoe County Theatre Festival two years ago now, I think. My goodness. He and I were both in plays at the Simcoe County Theatre Festival, and we connected because he is a lifeguard turned actor. Uh, I should clarify, he's a lifeguard and actor, simultaneously pursuing acting while also having a very successful career as a lifeguard with the city of Toronto. He has an amazing story to tell, and he's an absolute gem of a human being. You may also see his adorable cat, Mona. If you're watching on YouTube, she uh, made a little entrance. It was very adorable. We love cats on this show. We love animals on this show. Bring them on if you're going to be a guest. (laughs) Anyway, please enjoy the incredible joy that is Ahmed Mokdad. Oh my gosh. The most interesting things are when you don't really have a plan and they just come out of people they just happen yeah, yeah right yeah that's that I, I feel the same thing with acting i think you know the best acting comes when you're when you let go of just like this is how i want to do it or this is how i was directed to do it yeah <laughs> yeah so true with yeah so tell me your story how did you get into acting uh acting has kind of just been around for a long time uh i got into acting in high school I was a huge fan of uh, shows like Friends and How I Met Your Mother and uh, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and I, I would pay close attention. I would watch a lot of the bloopers, and through watching bloopers was when I was kind of like, I I love how much fun these guys are having uh, while they tell the story, and they're telling such cool stories, and uh, I want to kind of get get to like laughing and 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 be a part of that kind of dynamic with a, with a bunch of friends doing comedy. Uh, and so I, in grade 10, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to try it out and we'll take a drama class. And at first I was like, ah, too cool. No, I'm too cool for this. This is not, this is not for me. Uh, and then like maybe like a week into grade 10 and I, I grew up in Edmonton, by the way. Uh, so over there we start high school in grade 10. So it was my first year of high school. And so I was, you know, it was kind of like that idea of like, do I, do I really want to stick, you know, do I really want to be in a drama class for the whole, for the whole uh, school year? And then I realized, yeah, I do want to be in a, in a drama class for the whole school year. And uh, that was kind of how it happened. I, I, I just, I, I realized that was just one day I went into the, the, the acting uh, rehearsal. We, we, we were rehearsing uh, for the play Hairspray. I, I got one of the background roles. Uh, I played Sketch. And uh, that was kind of like my my in into 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 the world. It was through musical theater, yeah. So you get into it during high school. What happens after high school? Do you go to theater school? What brings you to Toronto? Well, after high school, I was going to go to uh, university in Edmonton. I was just gonna. It was just kind of like a for fun while you were in high school type of thing, just like a hobby. That would, at least I was like how my parents ingrained it in me. They're like, yeah, you can, you can, you can do the drama classes and all that. But after high school is done, you're going to go to university. Right. And so I, I applied to a bunch of universities in Edmonton, but I didn't get into the one that I wanted to get into. I, I wanted to become a teacher and uh, I didn't get in just because I spent so much time focusing on acting when I was in high school that I didn't really do too good in my normal classes. <laughs> and uh, uh, because of that, I, I, my, my options were a little bit limited. And so what I went, what I did was I took a year off and then I just kind of went back to, to, to like after school to just kind of upgrade my, my uh, marks. And it's kind of like my parents were like, all right, you, you might as well like go upgrade your marks and work a little bit before, before you go to university. And I'm like, you know, I do want to like try out this acting thing uh, because while I was doing doing that doing that first year out of high school, I worked a lot, but I also did a lot of like local theater, just volunteering, and 
and I'd, uh, at different like locations uh, within Edmonton. That was kind of like where I realized that this can be something that I can do forever. Even if it's not a career, it's something I just want to be involved in. If, even if I'm just giving like my volunteer time, uh, just to entertain to like, to like see people's faces kind of like light up and to work with all these cool artists. Uh, but I think it was in January. My mom asked me, she said, so January 2019. So what do you want to do? And I said, you know, I, I want to go to Toronto. I want to, I want to move to Toronto. And I want to try try acting full time. And she was like, "All right, that's what you want to do. You go try and do that." Uh, at that point, my mom was already very like sold on the fact that like like her son can be an actor. But before then, it, it wasn't it wasn't like that. It was when I was in my grade twelve year, and I think maybe even after that, like when I started doing theater uh, locally, and like my mom saw how much I loved it. At that point, I'd been doing it for four years too. So, like, it was like, it, like she, she saw that it wasn't something that was gonna be boring, like that that I was gonna fall out of that, or or that I was gonna like not be uh, sustainable at, uh, or not understand very well. And so, it was in high school, my grade twelfth year. I got to play the lead character in our musical uh, uh, that we, that we did that year. We did in the Heights. If you've heard of it. Uh, yes. And I got to play Usnavi. So because like I'm, I, I love like hip hop. Hip hop has been ingrained in me since I was like nine, which is kind of like a little iffy. <laughs> like like why am I nine years old listening to hip hop? But but at the same time, like I loved it. Uh, and so like to me, it was like it was like I, this part is mine. If we're gonna do this play, I have to play Usnavi. And it was it was my drama friends. They were the ones who convinced my drama teacher to 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 do this new play she's never done before because she used to always just do hairspray grease and crazy for you and all these different like plays that everyone knows footloose and then she was like you know we'll try something new uh, and when when we did the auditions for that i did like eight auditions for it where instead of like instead of like the regular just like song in a monologue i i did four songs and i think i did like two monologues and then i did one number from the actual musical itself and the other songs that I sang were all uh, uh, rap songs. Like I, I did like the Lonely Island. I rap, I sang one of their songs. I did like, uh, uh, oh man, yeah, I I had I had some fun with that one. And my my parents saw that, and then they were like, yeah, yeah, okay, we get it. Maybe maybe he can actually try this out. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's interesting because, like, I think that happens, like earlier in your life like almost like parental acceptance compared to i would say a lot of people it, the fact that it happened at all yeah. right i think that's yeah, yeah, yeah. vain that i see through a ton of people who are like i call as second act actors right like is mm -hmm. the reason why they didn't go into acting in the first place was from parental figures well-meaning or not saying maybe go to something more sensible right yeah, tell, tell me yeah. more about that. Like, with, I know you kind of mentioned it briefly that there was that kind of bit of pressure, mm -hmm. but then the shift in grade sure. twelve—that's exciting. It, definitely, I, I think the shift happened just kind of out of like a, it was kind of like a eureka thing. Maybe like they saw me, and that same night, my mom came up to me and she said, "Like, you gotta try this out. You gotta like continue doing this. It's cool." And then, and because I was, because you know, she saw me like singing and rapping and dancing at the center stage, it's much different than if you're, like, in the background. Uh, I think, you know, it, to a certain extent, you, you have to really, like, put so much effort and work into, like, being being the one that's seen in order to get that parental acceptance. I think I, I just kind of understood that I couldn't tell them I wanted to do this. Um, but my even even till now, like my, like, my parents don't want me to just do acting. They uh, like well, one of the questions that you asked me, uh, and I, I wrote the answer to. You asked uh, like how how would my parents describe me? Uh, like like how would my parents describe what I do for for a living? And I would say like they 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 would describe me as like an artist within the film industry, but they wouldn't say that I am a, an actor. They would say I'm a creative within the industry. Uh, like, it's because, because I, I want to be more involved off camera as well. Like that's what my degree that I'm studying for right now is it's production management. And so I, I think, you know, my parents, like this idea of like an actor, actor, I think 
they they're very like like i don't know how to explain it like they're their understanding of the now and so they understand all that but they're immigrant parents i think i got i got very very lucky like with my parents because they're not they're not the uh the most easygoing and other things and i think i think probably my my brothers being really successful in their own fields so like that probably gave them the idea like okay you know we'll let Ahmed have his fun <laughs> yeah are you the youngest <laughs> No, I'm in the middle. Uh, my middle. my little brother, yeah, my my little brother, he just got accepted for his PhD. Uh, j- right outside of his degree, like was, he just finished his degree and he's going to do his PhD right away. Yeah, he like he had professors fighting for him. Uh, he's studying a lot in in neurology. Yeah, he's a big smart guy. Uh, and my older brother, he's a software engineer. Oh my goodness! Yeah, do yeah, you so. find like you kind of mentioned it, and I think, you know to throw a stereotype about immigrant parents that we hear so much about, you know, like the deeming of success being like doctor, lawyer, engineer, nothing else. Because people who came into this country fought so hard to get into this country and bring their family there. There's this feeling of this is what I deem success because we need, we need to have success for survival. Sure. But now that you have other br- other siblings who've done that, is the pressure now just off? They're like, ah, Ahmed will do his own thing. We've got two successful sons. He could go to the great I, I would I would love if that was the actual case, but I I think I think it's quite the opposite, honestly. I, I think my parents pay more attention to me than they do my brothers. Like like they they give me maybe twice the amount of attention that they that they give my brothers because they know my brothers are going to be all right. Like they're smart kids but they're more introverted they they know they're gonna keep out of trouble whereas with me i am the trouble and so so to, to them they've always just kind of had to like keep an eye on me uh yeah but i think also my my parents they love television like and they love actors uh both my parents still spend days and days or like all their nights still just like sit 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 in the living room and just watch arabic tv shows that they've watched before or new shows and the actors that they like and so to them i think it's it's more along the lines of like like they're they're happy that one of their kids is able to express themselves the way that they want to uh and that it's in something that they are familiar with like they my parents have very strict rules at what i'm doing even like right now even though i'm an adult and i live on my own they they tell me there's there's specific things that you cannot do like it, sure, there's a lot of like parties and a lot of drinking that goes on, but they say don't go to any of that. Stay home, go out with your friends, go watch movies instead. Do those little things. Uh, like when it comes to like girls, uh, like don't get distracted type of thing, you know. Like uh, uh, so th- all these different rules because because they know I I get influence and pressure often. Uh, I'm easily easily influenced. I, I love the the collaboration. So to me, yeah. The like, like the bar of boundaries has to be set by by them. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. So, what brings you to Tor- so you move to Toronto? You want like I know I must say what brings you to Toronto, but the obviously the the allure of the city, but like that's a big move by yourself. Yeah, it was it was a, quite a quite an intense move. Uh, I don't think I was ever scared though. I think I was I was very just excited to get started. Uh, it to me it was I can't I don't know how to explain it because COVID kind of just like threw everything off the loop. Uh, so like when when I came here it was in 2019, and I had spent six months before basically working 60 hours a week, and I, I was gonna get to that, but basically like I I do have a second career, and this is kind of my parents' way of like being like okay we know he's gonna be okay because I I work in life saving and I, I'm a lifeguard and I'm a swimming instructor, and uh, so being a swimming instructor like that pays pretty well and uh and it also it's a very fun job that's very related to acting in a certain way there's a lot of similarities uh and also like i i i'm now like starting to go into more uh, aquatics leadership positions so like becoming a, a coordinator with the city of toronto and uh, uh doing more work as a first aid instructor I think I did a lot of that before I came to Toronto. So like in Edmonton, I was already certified and ready to go. So I think that was probably why I wasn't so scared because I, I knew like, 
sure i came to toronto to like act and like go to school and have some like uh, uh, uh create this new life but also i i came here i was you know i'm I know I have a job and I'm going to be, I'm going to be all right. Uh, uh, and, and I have something that I enjoy doing that I'm already like established in that's outside of acting. Uh, it's something to keep me kind of grounded. I think that just having, having the, 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 the lifeguarding job has saved my life in more times than I can count living here in Toronto, uh, like just financially and, and more like on the, like the mental side, uh, like living in, living in Toronto on your own. To be able to be a part of the community just makes you feel more, uh, I guess, welcomed into the into the city. Yeah, yeah. Tell me more about that. I think, and that's a, a lovely way of you know saving your own life, but also you are literally life saving as a lifeguard, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, kind of. Ironic. Yeah. Tell me how I run it, right? Tell me more about that job. How did you get into that? Sure. And then more about yeah the similarities you're mentioning about that and acting. I'm so curious. Okay. I, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you the exact same question about about how how you got into being a doctor and and, and then how the how the choice to change do and plus you just came back from like uh, being in like uh, uh, Winter Olympics was it? It was the uh, Winter University Games. Yeah, this the second, University Games. Olympics are the yeah the Winter Olympics are the largest. This is the second largest. Uh -huh. right after it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have so many yeah. questions about that because that's <laughs> that looks so cool. Uh, but I, I guess I'll answer yours first. Uh, my dad was the one who kind of got me into uh, into uh, lifeguarding and, and life saving uh, uh, the industry. I, I worked at McDonald's throughout high school, uh, and I didn't really like that job very much. It, it was a great job. I, I met some really interesting people, and I got pretty far in the in the ranks. Uh, like I like I was basically promoted to become like a, a floor manager, but. Uh, at that same time, when like I was offered like this, like people started talking like, oh, you know, like you should become like a floor manager. Now you're ready and stuff. And, and I was like, oh, I don't want to like be around the fast food uh, area. Like I uh, just looking around and smelling the air. It just it wasn't kind of for me. And so I told my dad, I said, I, I don't want to do this job anymore. It's it's not fun anymore. And he said, well, then go. Uh, well, a friend of mine, he, his, his kid teaches uh, swimming. Do you want to do that? And I was like, so I know I know how to swim. Yeah, why not? And so I just I I took the bronze medallion class like to to see my life saving skills. And I passed that, and then I took the bronze cross, and then I was certified, and then I started uh, assistant teaching uh, with my bronze cross, and then I using uh, like assistant teaching just like voluntary uh, using those hours. I I got my instructor's uh, course done. And then I became an instructor up until I graduated high school. It was that was in grade, grade twelve. I around the same time I, I did in the Heights, uh, and then that was, and then after high school was over, when I got my diploma at Edmonton, it's different than here. Over here, which is a look kind of odd, you can be hired to become a lifeguard at sixteen, but in Edmonton, you have to have a high school diploma in order to become a lifeguard. Yeah, you, you have to be over eighteen, and you have to have a high school diploma. So. Which is different than here. So I thought it was kind of interesting. But anyways, I got into lifeguarding after I've already been an instructor for like a year, maybe. Uh, and then and once I became a lifeguard, that, that was when I realized that, yeah, okay, like I can do this. Because instructing was fun and all, but it was a lot of commotion. And in, in, in Edmonton, it's the way, that they, the, the way that they run the classes is, is a little different than the way they, they run it here. Here, it's a lot more, I think, to my style. Um and uh, also being a lifeguard gave me the opportunity to progress in the in the aquatics industry outside of just being an instructor like becoming a supervisor and whatnot yeah so that was that was that was how i got into it mm. yeah what's you notice similarities between lifeguarding and act well in both in both uh <laughs> in both careers you have to do a lot of waiting uh just vigilantly just kind of like staring and just kind of hanging out uh in in one job lifeguarding i'm just waiting for an emergency to happen and in acting i'm, I'm waiting for someone to say my name and, and just get started I, I guess you can say a lot of waiting um but i think uh like to to a more like honest uh Answer. It, there's a lot of you have to really know how to control your breath, and when you're when you're good to be a good swimmer, like to to be able to to, to save someone's life outside of the inside the water, 
And to be a good actor, I think you also have to have really good uh, uh, breath control, uh, just understanding of, of how your breath works. Uh, I think also instinctual behavior is an is an important one. Uh, so like to to be able to to have to have to know the right instincts and to and I think the one thing that I learned about acting through lifeguarding would be that repetition matters so much. Uh, and I think, you know, to a certain extent, maybe sometimes I get conditioned as an actor to be like, oh, try to stay authentic. Don't, don't repeat it too much. But, but, you know, when you put it like in a seat, like a, like a life-saving scenario, you have to have done so many, like, uh, uh, training, uh, opportunities and my cat and situation, like, cat. uh, <laughs> she's just body or no stop it. Stop it here. Come on. Come say hi. Oh there she is. It's a, this is Mona. Hi, Mona. Hi, Mona. You want oh my God. Yours? She's okay. so cute. Oh, well, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, and she likes to bite on she's the wires. on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like, no, no, not not for me. Anyways, uh, yeah, instincts. You, 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 have to, you have to trust your instincts at the life parody. Uh, one second miscommunicated is, is like could cost someone's life. Uh, and so, uh, and I'm sure you understand that being a doctor, you know, working in the, in the uh, health and safety field, uh, to, be, to, know, to know how good your instincts are, to be able to trust your, your blink, uh, as Malcolm Gladwell says, uh, it's, it's really important. That is so interesting. And let me know if you resonate with this. So what I notice when I'm in a emergency situation, so like the one that always comes to my mind because I do it fairly often, is like an emergency C-section. Like you need, it's like seconds, right? And everything goes really, really quickly. But if you've practiced, like you said, that repetition there's no panic involved, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I notice I get a tunnel vision, weird sense of calm that comes over me when I know I need to be very instinctual quickly and fast. Do you find that as well? Like when you're in that scenario, like there's no panic. It's a, there's a weird calmness that comes over me that yeah. kind of, sometimes I wish I could tap into in other parts of my life. <laughs> yeah yeah there's this, a sense of stillness i think uh, uh i i'm not i'd like to think of it as you're almost you're almost dreaming like to, uh because you're you're not worried about all these other things that would stress you out like oh like i could do something wrong or like this person could, could die but you're, you're just more so worried about how your hand placement is or like you're more worried about physical things and, and when you're present in, in in a physical sense then you're uh, your sense of calm, I think, is like kind of just kind of correlates with them, maybe, perhaps. Uh, at least that's what I found. Uh, I've been lucky enough where most of the situations that I've had to uh, deal with have been pretty like like they 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 end before they get bad. That like they're prevented before 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 it gets to a point where where I'm so like in an emergency setting. But there was a time when when somebody's uh, uh, and I don't know how how graphic we can be right now. But uh, like a, a person would have like a major bleeding incident or like the, like an open wound uh, in the water. And even if my uh, job is one of the second responders or the third responders, like a, the second lifeguard on, on the scene, it uh, would be more like, uh, like crowd control, I think. That that's still that's still a pretty like intense thing to do, and uh, um, it, it can get, you can get more carried away doing the more uh, or like the the less life saving things and more like personal relations related uh, uh, jobs uh, uh, than you would uh, uh, in like not not knowing what to do in, in a first aid situation, right? Uh, because we we train so much in the first aid situation, but we don't we don't train as much with the personal relations. Can I, I want to touch on again, something that you said that just made me think uh, about repetition. And yeah, you know, I think about that with like the games I just came, uh, came finished, you know, we would practice and practice and practice our like extraction skills, the first responder skills, because the more you practice, the better it's going to be. And you get that physicality down and you feel comfortable yeah. with it. So you can 
have that sense of stillness and calm. But I agree with you. You mentioned something about authenticity that you don't in acting. You don't want to practice. You There's a worry about practicing too much that it gets inauthentic. But you, you would yeah, to, to, to an extent, story. yeah, yeah. Tell me more. Tell me more. Exactly. Uh, I, 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 I think when it comes to repetition, I've, you've taken classes with with uh, Lewis Spillmander before. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you taken classes with Lewis himself? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna be on my podcast yeah. in like three weeks. I'm so excited. Oh no way! What? That's so cool. Like oh, that's man. so cool. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude, yeah, just, just be prepared for a whole hour of just him. T- I'm giving so excited. Gold. Yeah, 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 that's great. Well, I, I, th- I think, you know, like, like what I have to answer about that is, is a lesson that I learned from Lewis uh, about, like, when it comes to repetition, it doesn't have to always be repeating the lines because the lines can be learned based off of your memory. It's, it's more of a cognitive thing than it is than it is a behavioral thing. Like, like I guess, sorry, sorry, it's more of like a, of a biological thing than it is a behavioral thing. Uh, whereas if you want to, if you want to kind of practice the behaviors and be in more control in that sense, more calm and and being in a high stakes environment, you can repeat. You can do repetitions by just practicing the way an athlete would practice. By like, if you sit down and meditate and think about being sad and think about being angry and and things that make you angry, the people who make you angry, why they make you angry, and all these different feelings uh, that 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 are other than angry. Uh, I think once you like just practice the ability to like do that memory recall, not necessarily memory recall, but just like, like, uh, like how you react to, to a certain association, then it doesn't matter what the words are. I think the, the repetition will come from the understanding of, uh, of, uh, what works when, you know, it, 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 but it really all comes to, I guess what I mean by repetition is practice and like practice the way an athlete would practice. Like, you need, you do 20 reps of, of, of one feeling, <laughs> uh, and yes. And so that's that's really interesting. I, and I, I think I've talked about this before on this podcast about my own personal experiences with bringing up tough emotions. And like I, I, I play the I get auditions for like stressed out mom of toddler a lot. Sure. And <laughs> and I'm like, great. I Honestly, I love it. What I found really interesting was, you know, I, I, when I was first starting out, I'd say, okay, I'm going to do this self tape for stressed out mom of toddler after a big, crazy day of work where I'm already stressed out. So I'm going to come home and already have that emotion within me. And it's going to be so authentic, which was the complete was, was false. What I would find yeah. would be the most authentic would be when I could sit and like meditate and get cleared away get that stillness like you said Mm -hmm. and then i was able to bring up stressed out mom from nothing which i didn't think was a thing i thought oh look at me my life's already stressful (laughs) let's put it on camera no it just didn't work which is was new to me because again like i I, i'm just learning how to do this so i think that's yeah, yeah the biology of it is just fascinating it is isn't it I, I, the, it's one of these things that keep keep surprising me every day about this about this job. Like, yeah. like how is it that if, if I have a friend of mine? He is such a great actor. The one thing he doesn't do is is put on a show. Like he doesn't. He's he, he, he's a very just kind of like he, he reminds me a lot of like a Christian Bale maybe or like like a mm-hmm. like a uh, like a Johnny Depp perhaps. He's very like kind of introverted, like kind of conserved to himself and. Uh, as soon as he needs to entertain or 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 or, or he's like exploring himself in a, in a scene then so much comes out of him and you watch him and and it's so raw and then as soon as it's done he just he's back to like all right and, and he's very self-critical of himself like he's very self-critical of himself uh which i think kind of goes in ha- hand in hand in in your ability to kind of be more ignorant to like how you how the camera sees you that makes sense yeah I like like because the way that he's critical about himself it's not how he looked or like the way his hand was it's it's a little bit more on like he wasn't he wasn't trying to say what he just said he was trying to say something else and it didn't come out the way he wanted it to and like he's so critical in that sense and, and i just i enjoy watching him work <laughs> I, I just i just like watching him like do his thing because because you see that that sense of stillness doesn't go away well when the camera cuts 
Hmm. Yeah. Has to that's, that's, I think that takes a while. Yeah. It, I think it does, right? I think that, yeah. and that's the, I don't know, I think that's the tough thing about acting that so many people think it's, it's something that, yeah, there are some actors who it's innate, right? They are born talented. They are, this is, yeah, they're born that way and they're just plucked from obscurity and they never needed to go to school. Um, and it's just a natural instinct of talent. But I truly think so much of the ability to do that. And when you listen to actors speak about their education and their training, like they never, for the most part, never stop training because that mm. stillness can be taught and worked on and trained. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I guess I've never even looked at it like that. I, I, I've always taken classes because the main reason for me to take a class, an acting class, is to meet people and have fun. Yeah. So, like, uh, be, yeah, I guess to a certain extent, yeah, I'm, I'm really just trying to understand how to be more still. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm, I've not been still. Like, you ask my mom, she'll tell you, like, she had to, like, cuff me <laughs> when, when I was a kid. Uh, being still is not something I know how to do. But I, I look at my brothers and the way they talk, I'm like, that's like captureable. That's so authentic and so so you because you're not worried about all these different things that an actor worries about. Well, and I think, do you think your background in theater, like that, that would propel you to succeed in a, in theater because theater acting is so big to project the emotions to the back of the theater. Where mm -hmm. film and television, it's like, don't move at all. You just need to think it and you can see it. And it oh, I think it's so still. Yeah. yeah and breath. And you're like, yeah. oh, for God's sakes. It's hard. Yeah. I, it is. You know, I was watching uh, and this this new Netflix uh, movie that I watched the trailer for uh, with Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill. I forgot what the name of the film was, but it's a comedy. Uh, and I was watching the the. The, this one scene where they were in the car together and the first thing I was thinking was Jonah Hill the same guy who maybe 15 years ago was like doing the biggest motions in order to like actually like like be captured on the screen is now like basically just looking at Eddie Murphy and just like saying something in the most like calm and and still way and have that be just as funny and, and I think to to an extent I think possibly it's it's a technological aspects that that, that 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 we have to have just kind of understand so like in theater that technology is just not that's not it's never going to get to to that capacity where someone is this close to you and, and they're acting in front of you and because it's not not realistic uh, uh but but in a film yeah you like the specs are so clear now that every tiny tiny little thing matters like uh, and the mic will capture everything I have not. I haven't had an audition in like two months now. It's the dead like, wow. season. Nobody has. Nothing's going on. It's yeah, minus three, it's fine, and then it eight. sucks. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> this is a downtime. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, it's, it's great because I'm in school right now, so that's like I've just been focusing. Well, on. there you go. Has there been has there been anything that has surprised you about the entertainment industry? Hmm. <laughs> The entertainment industry. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of surprises about about the entertainment industry. Uh, I don't know. I, I sh like a lot of the surprises that that I am surprised by. I think are things that are so obvious that I feel like I should have known already. Like, like a like a casting director wants to see actors act. They enjoy doing that. Like that's like that's why they became a casting director. I think sometimes like I get surprised by that because like it's such a demanding job and because you're spending so much of your time looking at actor after actor. Um uh <laughs> like you, you can't help but think that it can be a little like mundane, right? Or a little tedious. Uh but but they love it and and so like these things like it, Perhaps not everyone, perhaps not every casting director, but, but I, th I think the ones who continue doing it and, and are really good at it are the ones who obviously love it. But uh, I don't know. I'm, I can't think of many surprises from the industry so far. 
a lot of the surprises that I've learned about the industry have been on the producing side, like as a production manager, what I've learned in school has been very surprising. Like the reason why a lot of Americans come to Canada to, to shoot is because of the tax incentive. And I didn't know about all that, but I was like, oh yeah, that's why there's so many things filming here because they make their money back <laughs> just, just by coming to film here. They don't even have to make the money. Yeah. Canada, Canada provides these, these things just so that people come in and hire people here. And I think maybe, maybe it's not so like, again, maybe it's not so surprising, but it is, there's quite a shock factor to know that like a whole government entity is literally just there to like find ways to get people to come from other parts parts of the world and in this like globalization that we live in now uh post globalization world uh to, to find these incentives to like make location an industry uh, rather than just a film industry yeah i think so yeah tell me about tell me about the schooling you're doing now and like, why did you pick that? And what are you hoping going for? I know she's just your kid. It's just the cutest thing. I, she's she wants to be on the camera, but she doesn't know she's, how to do it. She's, she's subtle. Yeah, yeah, she's very subtle. <laughs> Cleaning herself. Right? Yeah. Anyways, uh, so what was the, what was the question? Or just cat? She's a supermodel. She is. Yeah, my, question. My, my question. Well, well I look at her. Um. It would just tell me about the schooling you're now doing and why did you choose that um, over going to see like acting school, theater school? I did go to acting school. Um, I, went, I went to Toronto. Yeah, I, I went to Toronto film school. I, I went oh God, some school no. for acting. Yeah, I know. I should have mentioned it. That's why I came to, to no, I Toronto. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I went to film school. Yeah, I, and uh, I was able to create many connections through film school. And once I graduated there, uh, I at the, at the film school that I work at, they're affiliated with a university, and uh, this university just started this this new uh, degree. It's called a Bachelor of Creative Arts, and it's it's like their their newest uh, degree program in uh, at the school. And uh, so they mostly accept Toronto Film School graduates, but. You can be a graduate of any university or or college and have like a diploma in in any sort of arts field, uh, and you can take this course. and It's basically catered for artists, so it's like it's like uh, artists in any medium. Uh, I have a lot of like I work with a lot of video game artists. I work with a lot of uh, 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 fashion designers and uh, a lot of film production people, directors and whatnot. Um, writers. Uh, so basically, they just put us all in one room and they teach us a little bit about financial leadership and how to like manage yourself as a talent, how to how to manage a project, uh, how to get funding from various uh, public, private, and crowdfunding sources. Uh, they just kind of uh, give you give you a sense of it's it's kind of like a producer's like a, a residency kind of uh, kind of similar to, but it's a bachelor's degree, like it's a degree. Um, but, but it's only it's only a year and a half or two years long, uh, because you need that the two years of experience uh, uh, in a schooling uh, like uh, in a different arts field. So I have an acting diploma from Toronto Film School, and in June I will have uh, graduated from this university and have a degree in creative arts. And then my parents will be like, "All right, great." <laughs> You got the expensive paper on your wall for Britain. Yeah, yeah, fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> Love that. Oh, it's so great. You know, I, I, I think, I think it'll be useful because I've learned so much about about how to produce now, and I already have like jobs lined up. People, people I want to like stage manage with, and uh, like I, I know this production company, this theater uh, company that is now starting to be on the rise, and and they're looking for an operations manager. So like these types of jobs, I would love to do, and uh, it would be a way for me to kind of like step away from aquatics a little bit and focus more on on uh, the production side. Uh, but also, I, I am a first aid instructor as well, so and I do like teach leadership courses, so like I can I can instruct a lifeguard on how to become a lifeguard. Uh, so I, I would probably start doing leadership courses rather than lifeguarding and working with the city. 
if 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 it was the case where like I would actually utilize this degree, but ideally I just want to do theater. Mm-hmm. I just want to I just want to act on stage. <laughs> do you have any advice? For anyone who is interested in pursuing a career in acting, but also balancing another job, another career like you are currently doing. Sure. Yeah, I think um, I've always told people this. Uh, a, a human can do more than one thing at once. Like uh, like we are we are capable at multitasking, though it is difficult. Uh, it, it is It is something that we can do. So like might as well do it. So don't think that you're incapable. Like, just just try to uh, always remind yourself every day. Like, uh, as humans, we are able to do this. Many people can do two, three, four things at once. And uh, so, if they can do it, I can. Uh, I've always had that mentality. So I, f- I feel like that kind of helps me. As someone who is going to school, is an actor, uh, works a, a partially full time job, uh, and like tries to stay active within the industry as well. I, know how to time yourself yeah, time management and and scheduling is so important uh, if you don't if you don't like this if, if it wasn't for this phone i would be so lost in this world uh and if it wasn't for the calendar thing like i would i would miss so many things there's like a, if if one thing goes out of place or i forget to like adjust one thing then like I, it, it can be a little bit of a crisis uh, to, to try and manage but luckily i've been i've been pretty like like on top of it after, oh, after a point it just kind of becomes like a ha- habitual thing uh so yeah you know just just manage yourself well and uh you know commit 100 percent to everything that you're doing all the time uh th- like there's like this idea that like okay uh in, in order to like be a mom right like and and, and, I'm, and i've done a little bit of reading on on uh, how mothers are able to work and are able to still like live their life while having to take care of a whole person. Uh, and uh, the main thing is just be able to like focus on exactly on what it is that you're doing now, right now, nothing else. So if, you, if, you, if you're thinking about your kid while you're at work, then you're not going to get much done at work and people that you're going to be working with are going to have a hard time working with you. Uh, but if you focus, if you, like, if you set up systems that make it so your focus is only on what it is that you're doing now, uh, then you're able to succeed a little bit better, and then you're able to actually kind of be more calm because you're present, uh, and and you're not uh, uh, sort of like stressing a little bit o- over external things that are around you. Uh, but yeah, just commit really, and and ask many people for their opinions. Don't just listen to me. <laughs> uh, and uh, if 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 in three years you like it, I don't know. I, I'm a big advocate for like do what makes you happy for at least three years and if in three years it stops making you happy then it's a successful venture that just happened to only last three years you know uh but just kind of just just don't let it like bring you down at the end of the day because because that's not fun i love that i love that i think yeah i think there's so many there's a weird idea of failure with a lot of things and if i don't get xyz in my career then i've failed or you know this relationship and then we broke up and it was a failed relationship you know it still happened it was still an experience that you had a life part of your life that you had yeah exactly yeah you you can look at it as a regretful thing or you can look at it as a thankful thing and i just choose thankful because it's easier it's it's less effort to to like to like be to be to have to like put yourself in, into the idea of like oh I regret doing that. Uh, I'm sure you know like I don't I don't I don't believe that no one has any regrets ever because I think we've all done some things that are like you know maybe a little cringe or like like hurt somebody and and it's okay to feel regretful for that. It's it's important as a human to to feel regret, but you can't like you can't feel regretful over the things that you have tried to do. And that just were not out of your control, you know. Uh, like, like y- you can't regret uh, how you feel about a situation just be- just because it's it's not what society like uh, deems to be okay. Like, oh, like I I regret not pushing through acting and and, and trying it uh, just because I I, uh, I didn't feel happy doing it anymore. I felt too stressed. No, if you felt too stressed, then then that's great. Then, like, it's, it's great that you like you found a way to like uh, to, to stop that stress from happening because your own health is more important than than what society deems to be okay. Mm, that's powerful. I like that a lot. Like that. 
Right? I feel I feel like that's pretty like common sense, right? Yeah, it is. It is, but it isn't, right? Like when you say it out loud, you're like, well, yeah, yeah. Of course, it's easier to be thankful. That's it's so much easier. And I'm lazy, and I'd rather it be easy. And then, yeah, regrets, <laughs> annoying, and exhausting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, and I takes too that. much time. Takes too takes much time. We don't have time for that. Takes too much I, I time. Like yeah, like, I like that a lot. I, I can't. I can't spend time regretting things because 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 <laughs> then I'm not gonna because I'm because then I'm not gonna get to enjoy what I'm doing now. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, it does. I have I have a like that friend that I told you about, the actor. He is so good at what he does, but he, uh, like I said again, I, I said like he, he's kind of like self critical of himself. Um, but I I see that he tries every day to find like a a reason to smile, a re- a, re- a reason to just kind of like uh, give him give himself some sort of light. Uh, but he is that kind of guy who kind of lets himself. Uh, uh, be consumed by his own, you know, like little tiny regrets that don't matter. Like, oh, like h- how I presented myself to someone I just met, you know, like not that big of a deal. You can like all these little things, right? Yeah. T- tell me about the craziest, best, most memorable onset or audition experience you've ever had. Sure. Uh, I-, I have a couple. Uh, I'll give you a mini one, and then I'll give you the, the audition one. Uh, so when I was when I was in grade ten, I did a play called "And Then There Was One." Uh, it was a a slapstick kind of like mocking uh, th- this whole idea of a murder mystery. It was like one of those plays. Uh, and in the very first scene, I'm playing the lead character, and in the very first scene, I go to my my fiance or my wife, that the other person who lives in the house, and I scare her and. In the very last second, right before I went on stage, I decided I'm going to put on a mask and she's not going to expect it. Even though this is, that's something we've never rehearsed. <laughs> and so I had to slap on a mask. But while I put on the mask, I slap it on my head too hard and my nose starts to bleed. And, oh. and, <laughs> and I didn't know this at the time. So I, I went on stage and I feel like something running. But I think, oh, you know, I'm just like maybe sniffly a little bit. It's Edmonton. It's cold. Uh, and, uh, and so I have like this, like, uh, like clipboard in my hand with, with white paper on it. And we're talking about what we have to do in the day. And then I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Uh, and later in this whole scene, I, I have to actually like introduce the rest of the characters and bring them into the house one by one. But instead of me opening the door and answering the first, the first guests, uh, who, who arrives, I tell the other per the, my, my my fiance i tell her to go answer the door while i go clean up <laughs> and, and so i just kind of threw her in the bus and i was like go do my my, my whole scene and i was just gonna go figure this out <laughs> and she powered through she was a trooper like she she rehearsed we rehearsed the show so much and this is why repetition is important because to a certain extent like even even passively, when like you're watching the other person do a scene you're not even in, uh, you'll understand what the scene's about and and you'll know how to like kind of push it through. And she did it. Like sure, they missed a couple lines, and all the other actors were so confused while they were talking to uh, the girl, not the guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the audience didn't think it was it was uh, anything out of the ordinary. I asked my brothers. I said, "Do you guys see what just happened?" They're like. What it was a cool it was a cool play and then I was like the nose beat and they were like oh that wasn't that wasn't scripted <laughs> and I was like no no <laughs> yeah I so I hit her so much anything can right? happen it's the best anything can happen it was it was great and then I literally I come back on stage with like a paper a paper in my nose or like a, a paper towel in my nose and I just continue on with the scene and like nothing happened oh man amazing. Yeah, that was that was a pretty fun story. Like that's that's my favorite story to tell. I did that. That was from grade ten. That was my first year acting. Um, but my most recent crazy story, I I auditioned for a character for a one man show, one man play, which is being put on uh, at the Grand Theater in London, uh, Ontario, uh, currently. And uh, so this play is an adaptation of a book. About a person called Abu Bakr, who was a refugee who came to Canada in twenty, uh, I want to say twenty sixteen uh, or twenty seventeen, perhaps, 
and he came from Syria. He's a Syrian refugee, and he's also from Syria, though he grew up a big portion of his life in Jordan. Um, so when he came to Canada, he went to Edmonton, and we actually went to school together. Uh, and so I got to like talk talk to him a little bit, and, and we got to kind of like uh, uh, I, I I was the, the the school's like liaison for the Syrian refugees. I would just kind of like help them like navigate through school their first week. So I got to like actually like meet Abu Bakr and a couple other kids that that he ended up becoming really close friends with. And I think even my dad has met his dad before, uh, perhaps uh, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, like I didn't think too much of it. Grade 12 comes around, this book comes out, it's called Holmes, and uh, basically uh, the school counselor at our school wrote this book about Abu Bakr with him. They kind of like wrote like a little memoir from his journey um, uh, to Canada. Uh, and uh, s- uh, someone at the Grand London, or the artistic director at the Grand London, uh, uh, at the Grand Theatre, read the book, loved it so much, and they decided to adapt it. And so when they adapted it, I got called in to, to, to play the part. And for like maybe 45 minutes, me and the director were just talking about how crazy of a coincidence it is that I went to the same high school and that I actually know this kid and that I ended up auditioning for, for, this, for him to play him, right? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't get to, to play the part yet, but this is why I love theater because not, not one person can just play the part. Like it can, it can go on past just, just this one show, uh, uh, and and you know becomes an actual play that's copyrighted and this person can can license it and, and put it on themselves. Um, <clears throat> so like it is a career goal of mine to play this character because I have such a personal connection to it. Uh, but it, it is something that probably like I think I I left the audition thinking that I didn't get the part just because I was too close. Uh, and then I got called back and then I was like, oh, I got the part. There's no way no one else got this part. And then, lo and behold, Nabil comes in and woos them away, and and fully deservedly like uh, uh, gets this role that uh, that I cannot wait for him to like put on and see it and, and see what he does with it. He's such a great actor. Like when I saw oh, him do Martyr, I was like, Nabil. Oh. shout out to Nabil. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, wow. yeah. That is an incredible story. Like right, and and these these things they happen so often in my life. These tiny they little do. moments. Like one time there was, I, 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 I look up at the fire alarm that's going on and I, I look at my, my roommate and I'm like, is this fire alarm ever going to turn off? And then it just turns off. <laughs> like these little, these little moments. <laughs> yeah. And wow. That's, the, I was just say the world is so small. Globalization is a Yeah. But the entertainment industry is so small. It's Even like, though we feel like there's so many actors, many people, but like... I don't know the. It's so tiny, and I think especially like the good ones are so tiny, right? Like those of us who, and I'm putting myself in this category, narcissistically, I'm putting you in this category, who like are so supportive and kind, and like you know, we're gonna go see Nabil in every play he's ever been in, right? Like just supporting each other makes it even tinier because like you want to hang out with people who are gonna support you, yeah. and vice versa. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who who does who doesn't want to be around someone who boosts them, right? Exactly. And I think yeah. Canadian actors are so or said such a new baby industry in Canada, like it's compared to LA, that it's we do ourselves a disservice if we are not supporting each Going other. Going against each other, yeah. Exactly. You have yeah. to. Like, because we're against the like juggernaut Los Angeles lo- actors and New York actors. Like we sure, have to support each other. Stick together, yeah. Yeah. You have to. And I just, I don't know, I just think, again, like, the, that whole point of, like, like why waste energy not supporting each other? When supporting each other is so much more easier. It's, it's so much, more it's so much more fun. Yeah, it's so much more fun. Uh, one time I was working uh, with the city and I had a little bit of a disagreement with uh, one of my customer service representatives. And so I approached him with kindness and I tried to kind of understand his his point of view of the situation. And he seemed kind of frustrated that the patrons... We're not giving him the time of day. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, patrons can tend to be a little bit, depending on who it is, it's a public pool. So we can, we, we get a big mixture of people and not everyone's going to be nice, though most people are. Uh, and I, he, uh, the way that I approached him uh, was with, was with a sense of kindness and empathy. And I, I think he, he was like, oh, no one talks like that. Like, why are you being so fake towards me right now? That's what he told me. And he was a kid. He's 15 years old, this guy. 
And so like I get it out like, you know what? I understand that you're frustrated right now. And so I just kind of took a step back. But our party was like, man, like, how else am I going to approach if not with kindness? Like, how, how, how would I talk to you then? And it, I didn't know how to approach him. I, I, I felt at a loss as a, as, a, as a supervisor to try and connect with my, uh, uh, with the customer service representative. And uh, because, because I didn't know how to react to what he says holy. Well, and like how kind of, how sad that he didn't know what you were doing. Cause like, had yeah. he not ever witnessed kindness? I mean, I, 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 I sure he has. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he has. I, I think maybe to an extent, uh, I, I can tend to be a little bit like very, uh, uh, like by the book and, and that can, that can come off as, as a, a little fake or a, a little like, uh, too trained, uh, as, as one might say, like, uh, not, not as spontaneous because, because you spend so much time reading the lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so perhaps I did come off as inauthentic, but, but I, I just came from a sense of trying to understand what he was going through. And I and maybe, you know, other other supervisors that he's worked with have just been more direct, like, no, don't do this, do this. Uh, and so maybe he was, maybe he was caught, off, caught off guard with that. Yeah, yeah but it, him and I, he, he was fine. Like, like later on in the day, he apologized. I apologized and we, we, we figured things out. And I just told him, you know, when in, when in doubt, just blame the patron. Because yeah. it's all the patron's fault. Well, I think, you know, I kind of wonder about if he was expecting you to come at him it, with anger. And so he had made that up in his mind that that was going to happen. And so was, he was easily able to kind of paint you as a villain. And when you didn't, that probably took him off guard and was like unexpected. And when things are unexpected, that's when you kind of go like, ah, this is not what I was... Well, this is not the thing I made in my brain. This is not the schema right. that I thought. Ah, then that right. Right. would lead to you know like confusion, which would I guess project out as as anger, right? So you didn't. But you know, what was in the plan. Maybe uh, maybe not at that moment, but I, yeah. I think you know I, I noticed a sense of growth in, in the way he worked later because he 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 started to kind of be more uh, patient with uh, uh, patrons and. Uh, if he were if he was having troubles with the with the like point of sale system, he would right away just like tell me just go deal with it, and he would like leave the room rather than like escalating escalating the situation. He he just understood that he was able to trust me, and perhaps maybe like it was that that interaction that we had that helped him get there. Uh, yeah, that's those are things you remember, right? Even if you were frustrated in the moment, further down the line, you're going to remember that. Um, yeah. be impacted by it. That's pretty powerful. Yeah, really yeah. You you'd be surprised. Um, more often, the situations I have as a as a as a lifeguard are with my patrons. Oh, sorry, are, are with my coworkers uh, rather than with my patrons. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, any public like, any public facing like job, I think. Yeah, it's it's a trip. <laughs> to your coworkers, yeah, they're the ones that get to you. Well, I mean, I was, I was going to ask you, like, uh, uh, how is it? How is it working in the in like in, in a hospital? Like, what's what's that kind of dynamic as being being the person who administers the uh, the help? It's you know, it's very similar, right? Like, I think when you were saying you deal a lot more with your colleagues than you do with the patient, I think that's one hundred percent true because there is a bit of um, compartmentalizing and separation between like colleagues versus patients so you act a different way um i think you know working in the hospital has definitely changed since the pandemic right how can it have not mm -hmm. um but i see yeah like i remember learning something when i was in in medical school and it was the term kill them with kindness and give them no reason to be mad at you and again similar to what you were saying right like i think coming at it from from being kind and trying to understand is way less stressful and energy saving way is way more energy saving than coming at it and matching anger with anger. Mm -hmm. And it's hard yeah. because like the part of your brain that wants to be angry is like that lizard brain that is saying like fight or flight and you shut off the rationalizing part of your brain. So it does take that little extra step initially to be like, no, 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 be kind but in the long run it's way less exhausting 
way less exhausted. Yeah. 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 Then I'm already I'm uh, exhausted okay. enough. I don't want to add on more stress. <laughs> 12 hour I'm days. Tired. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. How busy. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. 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 Do you have any final words of wisdom or advice? I think I I think I said everything I had to say when when you asked me about uh, how to how to manage more than one thing. Um, uh, I guess you know uh, I don't know. Uh, don't let don't let ego and pride get in the way of of uh, having a good time. You know, there's there's no shame in being wrong. And so I I'll leave you with this. I'll say uh, there's two things that you can do to be a good person. Uh, you can admit that you are wrong and uh, do it often. And I could be wrong. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And thank you, Ahmed, for being my guest this week. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your incredible story with me and my guests. I am so, so happy that we met through the Simcoe County Theatre Festival. You are an absolute joy, and I'm so excited to continue celebrating and cheerleading your career. Oh, you're just such a gem, such a gem. I hope you will all tune in next week for another episode of Second Act Actors. Bye. Bye.